Hi guys. It is an absolutely miserable day. Hot, sticky, triple digit day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization somewhere outside of Boston, Massachusetts on this sweltering uh, Wednesday, August 29th, 2018. So, uh, I could not think of a better day to, uh, than, than this day and the collapse of global industrial civilization to bring you today's edition of my Collapse Chronicle written by a fellow, it would be by a fellow named John Halstead. John Halstead is a native of Southern Laurentian bioregion and lives in Northwest Indiana. Uh, he works to organize resistance to the fossil fuel industry. Yes. Uh, John was a principal facilitator of a pagan community statement on the environment. Yep. Uh, anyway, it would be nice to know, uh, unfortunately, when you do this, when you make a, when you copy a, a, a page from the media, it doesn't tell you the, the name of who the website is. So I will put a link, I'm going to find the website and put the link to this. I wish I could give the website some uh, credit, but I guess I will uh, in the verbal description of this. So you can go on the you can click on the, the link and read this article yourself, or if you just want to have some old uh, collapsitarian read it for you, I'll be glad to. Take it away, John Halstead, asking the question, what if it is already too late? Yes, as he's going to talk about the, the pitfalls of being an activist in the Anthropocene. <clears throat> Take it away, John. I had a terrible thought recently. What if it's already too late? Actually, this idea has been haunting me, hovering on the boundary between my conscious and unconscious mind for some time. And then he actually quotes Bill McKibben from 2016 when uh, John really started thinking maybe things are worse than previously thought. Uh, quoting Bill from 2016, I wish that I could guarantee you that we're all going to win in the end. The whole thing. And I can't because we don't know. The physics of climate change is pretty daunting at this point. Yeah, two years ago. The momentum of it is pretty big. Yeah, two years ago. We're not going to win everything. We're not going to stop global climate change. It is too late for that, close quote. And so, you, you know, with the old uh, apocalyptimus Bill McKibben sounding like that two years ago, you know, John's just like more and more asking in the South that, that anybody with a brain is asking, so what if it is too late? If there's not a damn thing we're going to be able to do about any of this from here on out. Uh, which is exactly what it is. And, uh, to, you, you know, once you understand that it is too late, what do you do with the rest of your life? And uh, so he's talking about, uh, you know, how tough it is to be a, uh, an activist thinking you're going to do a damn thing about this when it's clearly already too late to do anything. So anyway, this is a long, evolved essay. I highly recommend it, but just for, uh, just for time's sake, I'm going to read the last two sections of this essay. 
and you know I got a problem here because unlike that loudmouthed uh, Hasey twin of mine from over there at that other channel we don't talk about, I, Sam Mitchell, am not allowed to say the F word. But the problem is, the bottom line is we are F worded. It's right here, right here in the, right here in the essay, guys. If you don't want to believe me, believe this activist in the Anthropocene. We are effed. And uh, anyway, let me. Uh, okay, we're just going to pick up right here. Our civilization is going to die. There you go. Uh, our civilization is going to die. I know you Sherlock. If you're like me, you need to sit with that last sentence for a while. Of course, there's plenty of people out there saying otherwise. I could pick different sources to believe. With the World Wide Web at our fingertips, it's quite easy nowadays to choose any answer you like. I could choose more comforting answers, but it was a question, not an answer that really devastated me. Uh, from radical environmentalist Derek Jensen. Radical environmentalist Derek Jensen asked this question of his audiences, and it is one which I think every environmental activist should ask themselves. Quoting Derek, do you think this culture will undergo a voluntary transformation to a sane and sustainable way of life? Hmm, that question is what convinced me that the world as we know it is going to end sooner rather than later and more and more experts are coming to the same conclusion. Like Brad Werner, a pink-haired complex systems researcher who in 2012 presented a provocatively titled paper to thousands of scientists in the meeting of the American Geophysical Union titled, Is Earth <coughs> Effed? Werner's answer, quote, more or less, we are more or less effed. Or like Daniel Kahneman, the cognitive psychologist who won a Nobel Prize for his studies of how irrationally how irrationally humans respond to problems which require immediate personal sacrifices now to avoid uncertain collective losses. When asked to assess humans' chances for survival, Kahneman responded, quote, this is not what you might want to hear. I am very sorry, but I am deeply pessimistic. I really see no path to success on climate change, close quote. Or like Meyer Hillman, which we've had, I've already had this one too before, or like Meyer Hillman, a social scientist and senior fellow emeritus of the Policy Study Institute who has spent the last 20 years writing and speaking about climate change policy and who in 2017 announced his withdrawal from speaking and writing on climate change, declaring, quote, we are doomed. We are doomed. Hillman raised the same question as Jensen. Do we really think human beings will move to zero global emissions in the near future? More specifically, Hillman asks, can you see everyone in a democracy volunteering to give up flying? Can you see the majority of the population becoming vegan? Can you see the majority agreeing to restrict 
the size of their families, close quote. Hillman cannot see it, Jensen can't, and I can't either. And then uh, there was just out today, the same time this story was coming out, that the, uh, the environment minister in France threw in the towel yesterday. You know, just agreeing with all of there. There's not a damn thing, even if we do have the technology, which that's a big question, which of course you know my opinion of that. Even if we have the technology, we do not have the political and personal will to do a damn thing. Uh, to turn this freight train around uh, and civilization is going to collapse and humans are probably going uh, to follow civilization into oblivion and uh, the only question is not if, it's just when and what will it look like. There you go. Uh, that's the point that is glossed by so many evangelists of renewable energy there it is, guys. Little reality check. Renewable energy cannot replace fossil fuels. About 250 years ago, humans began, started using fossil fuels, first coal, then oil, to power civilization. What followed was unprecedented explosions of growth. The civilizational progress which we take for granted is the result of burning fossil fuels. But fossil fuels are finite resources and when they are gone, that will be the end of growth and progress too. But then of course there's the whole question is, will we burn civilization, the human race, and the planet to cinders before we ever run out of fossil fuels, which is a whole nother debate which he doesn't really get into deeply here. Alright, back to renewable energy. Renewable energy sources cannot produce as much energy as fossil fuels and transitioning from fossil fuels to renewable sources of energy only addresses the supply side of the equation. Do we have somebody talking about the demand side of the equation? The inconvenient little problem of the demand side of the equation. Okay. A renewable energy economy would only work if we simultaneously reduced our consumption. I'm not talking about people taking shorter showers and turning off the lights when they leave the room. I am talking about a contraction of the economy which would crash the global capitalist system. The only thing at this point, until we crash global capitalism, uh, the planet is doomed. This is no longer uh, open for debate. But obviously there is zero political will to, uh, to crash the global industrial uh, capitalist system. It ain't gonna happen. It ain't going to happen. We simply cannot transition to a 100% renewable energy economy without also ending capitalism. Nothing short of a global socialist revolution is going to be enough. And I'm using revolution quite literally here. But capitalism has proven so adept at adapting to ch challenges and absorbing dissent, nothing short of the end of the world is likely to bring it about. The world is going to end before 
the global capitalist system is going to end. And I'm not going to get into a Sam Mitchell rant that if you think switching from capitalism to socialism is going to make a, is going to make a damn bit of difference. Alright. Um, so he quotes Frederick Jameson from Future City. Quoting Frederick. Someone once said that it is easier to imagine the end of the world than to imagine the end of capitalism. That was me who said that. I just said it. <clears throat> we can now revise that and witness the attempt to imagine capitalism by way of imagining the end of the world. While it's easy for most people in developed countries to look around them and think that all is well, when they're saying 100 degrees on the thermometers in, uh, in Boston, Massachusetts, oh yeah. Uh, the fact is, we are living in what Rory Scranton, who I'm hoping to get um, an interview with, we are living in what Roy Scranton calls the gap between sowing the wind and reaping the whirlwind. We are like the patient goes to the doctor for a routine checkup. They feel fine, but the doctor returns looking grim. The prognosis is terminal. For some, this might actually be welcome news. Mm -hmm. I have communist friends who have been waiting a long time for the collapse of capitalism, and I have anarchist friends for whom the collapse of civilization is a good thing, is good tidings of great joy. Yep, everything is going according to plan Indeed, there's even some people who are trying to accelerate the collapse by undermining any attempt to reform capitalism, which might prolong his demise, saying the, and the, oops, some, some commenter on some other channel was talking about this very thing, or his sister was, that the, the quickest way to destroy global industrial capitalism is just leave uh, global industrial capitalism to its own devices and that will uh, destroy global industrial capitalism and before any and before any little socialist or communist revolution has any chance. All right. It turns out that the Marxists are partially right Capitalism is going to collapse, but it won't require the revolution of the working class. It's going to happen through the natural processes of capitalism doing what capitalism does. Consuming forests, consuming species, consuming human potential, and excreting carbon dioxide, toxic chemicals, and radioactive waste, in short, eating everything in sight and shitting where it eats. Even if climate change were not a reality, our civilization would still die with or without climate change. Thank you, brother. Uh, capitalism is just not sustainable. The combination of overconsumption, which is also part, in turn partially the result of overpopulation, and overpollution will all lead inevitably to civilizational collapse. Considering the damage capitalism is doing to the planet, that might not be such a bad thing. But unfortunately, our civilization is going to take a good part of the biosphere down with it. And this is why uh, people like Derek Jensen and others 
are, are, are saying, you know, every day that global uh, industrial civilization continues for another day, it's going to be that much harder for the planet to, uh, to recover when civilization does collapse, which it is going to do, the sooner the better for the planet. There is one species, well, one species and their little uh, domestic Klingons, uh, that would be worse off with the collapse of global industrial civilization. One species would be would, would be worse off. Okay, so now let's talk briefly about the stages of grieving for a civilization. Yep. Then uh, they quote from the film Interstellar. Quote. When you become a parent, what, when you become a parent, if you're a breeder, when you become a parent, one thing becomes really clear, and that is that you want to make sure your children feel safe. And it rules out telling a 10-year-old that the world is ending. Back to uh, John's rant. Uh, when my son was 13, he went through an existential crisis. He was losing his faith in the religion he had been raised in, including the belief in an afterlife. The thought of personal extinction terrified him. Over the next several years, he made peace with his own mortality. He did so at least in part by taking refuge in a new faith, the faith in human progress. He could accept the fact that he will die one day, but at least the accumulated knowledge of humanity would survive. I, at that time, felt the same way, and I know many atheists and religious naturalists who do so as well. We accept our own mortality while we cling to the faith to faith in the immortality of our civilization, but I don't believe that anymore, and now I don't know what to say to my son. It turns out it is not just individuals who die. So do civilizations. As Archdruid John Michael Greer explains in Dark Ages America, the last 5,000 years of human history have not been a straight line. There have been many dark ages. Uh, and the, the calls of these prior dark ages are familiar. Climate change, population growth, soil degradation, and widening social inequality. And then he quotes uh, G. K. Chesterton from the Napoleon of Notting Hill. Take it away, G. K. Quote, Many clever men like you have trusted to civilization. Many clever Babylonians, many clever Egyptians, many clever men at the end of, at the end of Rome. Can you tell me in a world that is flagrant with the failures of civilizations, what there is particularly immortal about yours, meaning ours. Our present situation is unique, however. Those civilizations before us exceeded the, the carrying capacity of their you know, their local land bases, but we are now connected to a global economy. We are facing collapse, not just on a regional level, but on a planetary scale. And while civilizational decline is not uncommon, the speed at which we are rushing toward ours is. The reason why we are so rapidly rushing towards this end is because we have a terminal case of 
denial. In the denial of death in 1974, Ernest Becker theorized that the basic motivation for human behavior is the desire, in fact the need, to deny the reality of our own deaths. According to Becker, we engage in immortality projects in an attempt to create something that will transcend death, but these immortality projects are maladaptive because they serve, they sever us from the flow of life of which death is a part. So we do this on an individual level, but also on a collective level. Western civilization itself can be understood as a collective immortality project, one giant complex attempt to deny our connections to nature, to the goddess, and hence to deny our mortality. Climate change denial is just a special case of a much broader and deeper denial, a denial of our limits. And it's not just climate change deniers who are in denial. Many activists on the other side of the spectrum, like me, are in denial as well. I wasn't denying that climate change is happening, but I was denying what that meant. I believe that we will win, I chanted with my fellow activists. I was in denial, and the origin of that denial, a faith in human progress, is what got us into this mess. Looking back, a lot of my environmental activism looks like the stages of grief, denial, anger, and bargaining. I moved into the depression phase recently. The good thing about depression is that it allows me to recognize this process for what it is. I am grieving for the death of human civilization. The last stage of grief, I am told, is acceptance. But what does acceptance look like? You know, when you're grieving for the death of human civilization, do we go on protesting? Do we go on fighting, like Bill McKibben says, because fighting is better than doing nothing? And uh, he will continue this essay in the very near future. You can look for John's next essay, Die Early and Often. There you go. Uh, Die Early and Often, being Addis, A-T-T-I-S, being Addis in the Anthropocene. Uh, whatever the word Addis means, I guess we'll have to find out. Uh, anyway, I want to thank John, former activist John Halstead for uh, being honest about the upcoming, ongoing, and some would say long overdue collapse of global industrial civilization, which is certainly in full swing uh, on this triple digit day in New England as the clueless, uh, as, 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 the, uh, as, 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 as the tourists prepare to head to Cape Cod and Martha's Vineyard for some respite from the heat. <sighs> Bye, guys. Little doggy, say, Pop, would you turn the fan back up, please?